How is your Aunt Eloise? Her house is so beautiful. Oh, I'm sure your Aunt Eloise will be helpful. She just loves to hide things. Those letters on your aunt's safe are definitely Greek letters. I bet the combination is related to the Greek letters on that note from her college sorority. Oh, Nancy, are you sure your aunt wouldn't mind you poking around with her school stuff? Oh, this sounds dangerous, Nancy. You'll need to find something in the kitchen that will prop up the gas line so you can take the bolt cutters. Nancy, I've run out of ideas. Please be careful, okay? Nancy, tell me everything. Did you get Rick's autograph for me? He's so gorgeous. It must be so exciting to be on the set with all those stars. George filled me in on everything that's happened, so tell me who the suspects are. I can't believe someone would do this to Rick. <sighs> no way, Nancy. Why would he send death threats to himself? <laughs> get real. But Rick's not like that. He always seems so caring. On the other hand, his character isn't all that nice. Do you think some psycho fan who's confused reality with fiction could be doing this? The bandit's treasure? Maybe there is treasure in the house. Did you ever find what Lewis found in that book? Check out the music in the attic desk. I bet the different notes are a combination for the piano puzzle. Tie the iron you found in the attic to the broken dumbwaiter and see what it contains. Find a way to get into that secret attic you found. It must contain important clues. Bonjour. Hi, Nancy. Just brushing up on my French in case you need any help questioning Jacques Brunet. Check this out. Qu'est-ce qui se passe? What? You're kidding. First he's engaged, and now this? What is the world coming to? Blue like an aquamarine? Or blue like a sapphire? Just curious. I like aquamarines, personally. George, are you suggesting that Nancy is a second-class snooper? You're going to give our friend a complex. Maybe he wants revenge. It's not logical, George. It's revenge. Yum. I could write a poem or two about chocolate milk. Never mind my cheeky cousin over there, Nancy. When the storm passes, you should go out and see what you can find. Maybe she's not a photojournalist at all. Maybe she's a federal agent. Or a computer hacker. Who ever heard of a queen who hated jewels? Or it could be the old childhood luck charm Wickford mentioned in the poem. Maybe that's what you saw Dexter hunting for. Hi, you've reached Beth Marvin's room. I'm either busy online or else I've stepped away from my post. Call me later. Nancy, it's about time. How's St. Louis? Oh my gosh. Why would anyone want to kidnap Maya? That's terrible. Have you called the police? What could possibly be standard about a girl getting kidnapped? Well, how did she disappear then? Poof? Alakazam? Call me back when you know more. I'll get a hold of George and Ned and let them know what's going on. Poor Maya. I guess the only consolation is that she's got you on the rescue mission. Give the guy a break. Maybe he just wants to hide the fact that his life is going to be empty without that theater to look after. Ooh, Nancy, that's kind of disco. So, he's a sweetie pie on the outside, but too hot to touch. Interesting. Maybe that's Brady's whole dilemma. He doesn't know whether he's a good guy or a bad guy. All in favor of men who slay dragons, say aye. Chock full. Bursting at the seams. Or practically, idea foric. Nancy Drew, you will never guess who the cat just dragged in. Frank and Joe Hardy. Let me tell you, they're as cute as ever. George and I were just telling them about your latest case, and... Hmm, judging by the way they're hovering around me at the moment, I think they want to say hello. Are you sure you're going to be all right there by yourself? We'd volunteer to drive out there and keep you company, but unfortunately my car's in the shop, and you know what a scaredy cat George is. He sounds like my uncle Zach. He's into birds. Only he doesn't watch them, he hunts them, then shoots them. I never really liked my Uncle Zach. Oh, Nancy, I was hoping you were this guy named Matt. He works at the movie theater in the mall, and he is so cute. And last night he asked me for my phone number. Of course we have time to talk. I'm dying to hear what's going on. Besides, if Matt tries to call me and gets a busy signal, that's a good thing. He'll think I'm popular. Ugly people have chips on their shoulders and are more likely to commit crimes, George. I read that somewhere. Either read it or saw it on Oprah. Keep your eyes peeled, Nan. Whatever that means. 
That expression has always creeped me out. Hey, how's it going? Grab the phone. It's Nancy. While George picks up, I'm going to turn down the heat under my roux. Oh no! Darn it! My roux! It's ruined! Wait a minute. I'm all those things. How come I'm not a famous model? What? Models can't eat cookies. That goes against the laws of nature. But that's not fair. All this time thinking that I could eat cookies and models couldn't is the only way I could feel superior to them. You just totally destroyed my self-image. I love his stuff. I can't afford it, of course, but I tried a Butter Leon once, and I gotta tell you guys, I look tray gorgeous. Great. I finally find a designer whose clothes look terrific on me, but by the time I get a job and make enough money to be able to afford them, he'll be in prison designing license plates instead of capris. Nancy, our link to the world of excitement and intrigue and decent food. What's the latest? We're at the airport in Omaha, Nebraska. Our plane had to land here so they could fix some problem with the radio, and now they're saying we could be on the ground for hours. Of all the times to get stranded in some stupid airport. Look, you just better keep us posted, Nancy Drew. That's all I gotta say. You're there investigating phantom horses, and what are we doing? A big fat nothing. That does it, George. We're suing the airline. We're stuck here when we could be there with you looking for hidden loot? That does it, George. We're suing the airline and the airport. We're stuck here while you get to read love letters? Okay, George. We're suing the airline, both airports, and the weather service. I know that tone of voice. You're not leaving there until you've done just that, are you? You... you want me to snoop? I'm not good at that sneaking around stuff, Nancy. I get nervous, my tongue gets all knotted up, my palms sweat to say nothing of my armpits. Beth. Absolutely, unequivocally, for the last time, no. Which, of course, actually means yes, because if I don't do this, I'll be stuck here by myself until you give up. And since we both know you will never give up, I don't suppose it would do any good to point out that the curio shop is closed. Mm, this is not going to end well, I just know it. And if I go to jail, you're baking me cookies every day. Chocolate, chocolate chip. Got that? I don't know. Sounds like a possible love triangle to me. Nancy, who's read practically every romance book ever written? You or me? Matt knows Kit still likes Kyler and Matt doesn't like it. End of discussion. You've been mixing drinks for people? Shouldn't you be doing something a little more made of honorly? Nancy, clearly neither you nor Kyler understands just what a maid of honor is supposed to do. Next time, just tell him no. You should be decorating and painting nails and picking out music for the reception and dyeing shoes to match your dress, not sheep herding. Sorry, I'm staking out Deirdre. Can't talk right now. I think she's going to make a move. I need to be sharp. Hang on. I think the suspect is doing something suspicious. Wait. False alarm. Suspect is just grabbing a snack. Suspect loves snacking. Loved ice cream. But then I had bowl after bowl trying to keep my cover and then my brain froze. Permanently. I'm so cold, Nancy. If I don't make it, tell my parents I died of ice cream poisoning. Good. When this is all over, I could go for a room temperature snack. And then a warm snack. And then something hot. Baby steps. He's like my spirit animal. He's so... calm. I stood next to him and we didn't say anything. We had crackers. He's so calm, I forget myself. It's like that time I met a cow. Dave dragged me to the fair, remember him? It was a fair, you know, so animals, scam artists, flirting with food poisoning. But then I found myself looking at a cow. And she was looking at me, and we had a really long cow-slash-human moment. We got into not a staring contest, more of a staring cooperation. I think I was there for, like, hours, not thinking, not wanting anything, just being and smelling, let's be honest. I'm sorry. I'm looking at Sonny. Pretend I'm talking to you about something, but I'm not. I just want to look at him. He's like one of those tall, beautiful things they have in Italy. A barista. I can almost picture him with a puppy, and it's perfect. I'm going to die here.